in all my 44 years, it would be hard for me to think of a building that was built without a model. I'm sitting now at the back room or the model room at, at Roach Dinkaloo. Kevin loved this room. It's, it was so important to his design process. The making of models and the um, design process for Kevin really came from Arrow's days. He could tell us what he was looking for with a quick little sketch on a piece of paper and we could stretch it into a three-dimensional object and that would be a lot faster than drawing four elevations and 15 plans and it was just a very fast way of sculpting. Then he would come to me probably late in the morning and hand me a yellow paper sketch of what he'd like to see in the model. Usually fairly simple, but always followed by the remark, do you think you would have something to look at by 5.30? It was nearly impossible to keep up with him. He would come up with an idea and set us to making it into a form if you didn't have something, you ended up with a, a pretty grouchy Kevin Roach. He was always polite. He was very considerate. But his grouchiness was hard to hide. I remember once with Steve Metzger and myself and a guy named Ed Connors were working on an interiors model. And uh, I was pushing Ed and Steve to I was saying, hurry up, hurry up. Kevin's chomping at the bit as usual. And Kevin was standing right behind me and he said, not as usual. If, if Kevin was waiting too long, he would come to our desk and ask for it. And he would often pick up a knife and start cutting it or scissors and start, you know, start participating. And the models were critical. Otherwise he had nothing to to move on or nothing to judge. The model team would start building a site usually, and that could be as simple as just a piece of cardboard set at a slope that represented the, the incline of the topography on the site. And looking at the site, that might tell you whether you can put a two-story building on the site or a one-story building, or maybe it needs to be three. As each design became more and more finalized, we would commit to larger and larger scales. We would build a model and then sit there and stare at it indefinitely. And you'd be in these swivel chairs and you'd roll around and everything. You'd say, well, what do you think? And what do you think? And let's cut that corner off. And he would say, maybe we should look at taking the top off. You know, like maybe slicing four floors on a diagonal from two inches in to four inches down. So we'd do that and then bring it back for him to look at it. And, and we developed a technique of doing this very, very fast. He always believed that it was never too late for a better idea, which would often turn us around and we would be taking what we had just completed, demolishing it and starting all over again. The materials for a building, whether inside or outside, he would want to see them before it was on paper. And I would often find myself down in the basement going through the samples and putting them together. You know, is the building stone or brick or metal panels? The way we would all work on this to make this happen very quickly, because you know, Kevin would be waiting to see, see what the idea is, um, one of us would be in charge of doing the pl plastic, the blue plastic with the score lines on it. One person would be in charge of doing this articulation with you know, limestone and, and blue glass behind it. One person would be in charge of building the cardboard box. And somehow we always timed it so that it would come together when it's all ready, and then we would all start wallpapering the box. So we'll jump up to a larger scale model where the gardens are articulated, and there are people now in the, in the museum, and we built the same scale as, you, as we just saw over on the smaller model. It's a lot different seeing it here with trees 
that were the same trees that we saw on the terrace on the other one, but now you know how big they are, and here's a person over here. Kevin, I think, is his greatest thing was understanding the needs and wants of the common man at, at work. He wasn't really worried too much about the CEO, you know. I mean, he would try to present it as a CEO, but he really had a depth of desire to make everyone's life a little bit better. And I'm an immense gardener, and I agree green brings a lot of compassion to your surroundings. And every building we did mostly is, you know, full of greenery. And there was a whole subculture in the office that dwelt on making greenery. Because once you were known as a good tree maker, no matter what you were doing, when a model needed trees, no, you can't go to Japan today on that job search. You gotta stay here and make trees. There was little left to the imagination after Kevin had a presentation in this room. You knew exactly what you were going to get for your design. But he loved his models. He loved sitting there in that swivel chair. I mean, we had three swivel chairs in this office. That was it. And no one could touch those except Kevin and whoever he was working with. Kevin had his favorite, and he never sat in that. You know, that was Kevin. Kevin lived, breathed, and architecture.